Hello everyone and welcome to another Pyro Gaming video. Pinnacle and Ritual weapons are really neat, uniquely crafted weapons that are supposed to be pretty strong compared to the counterparts in their archetype. Now, unfortunately, not all of these weapons are created equally, especially when you're talking about the Ritual weapons instead of the actual Pinnacle weapons. Pinnacle weapons, for the most part, were damn near on the same level as exotics. Ritual weapons are just unique or, in some cases, okay to good roles of weapons that you can find counterparts for out in the world without actually having to grind for the random roles. Questions that I get asked pretty frequently are, is this weapon, this ritual or pinnacle, worth grinding out? Is Wendigo worth having? Is 21% worth having? Is Mountaintop worth having? These are questions that I get asked a lot in my videos, in the comment sections, on Twitter, even when I'm streaming and I'm using one of these weapons. So what I wanted to do is make a little video where we give each and every one of the pinnacle slash ritual weapons currently in the game a rating value. Now I'm gonna do mine a little bit different here. I'm gonna do mine on a scale of one to 10. I'm gonna look at each one of these weapons and I'm gonna rate it on a scale of one to 10 instead of trying to say these are S tier, these are A tier, these are B tier and so on. And I'm definitely not going to be like, this one's number one, this one's number two, this one's number three, because it's it's subjective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each one of these weapons. I'm going to look at their counterparts and their archetype, how they compare to regular legendary weapons, and then I'm going to assign them a rating on a scale of one to ten, and we're going to start with the one out of tens and work our way up to the ten out of tens. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So oddly enough, I'm starting with the Vow, which honestly isn't really a pinnacle or a ritual weapon, but it is a legendary pursuit weapon that is the same style as what the pinnacles and rituals are. You get this from the Crimson Days event. They've had it two years in a row, so I'm assuming next year, next February, it's going to be back again. This thing is not good. Um, just flat out, like compared to other bows that are a similar archetype, other bows in general, this thing is just bad. This is one out of ten, easily. Moving up to a 2 out of 10 rating, I'm going to put the Komodo 4FR. Now, the reason that this thing is going to be rated so low for me is because it just does not have a place. It doesn't really have a place in Crucible, because why would you use a linear fusion rifle as your power weapon in Crucible when you could use a machine gun and get so many more kills much, much easier? And you're definitely not going to use this in PvE when you're doing actual activities that matter because why would you, you know? First of all, linear fusion rifles are not in the best place. Second of all, there's better rolls that you can get on linear fusion rifles than this. So that's why I'm putting this one so low on the list, because in my opinion, of all of the current Crucible Pinnacle weapons and ritual weapons that you can go out there and chase, this one is the least value, in my opinion. Next up, we have a 3 out of 10. Again, this one's kind of a gray area, like the Vow, whether you want to call this a pursuit weapon, a pinnacle weapon, a ritual weapon, whatever. But there was a little thing that you could do where if you completed a certain triumph in Iron Banner, you got the Wizened Rebuke. Now, cool concept, cool concept here, but there's just better fusion rifles to use in PvP. Um, hello, Arintel, have you heard of it? So that's why I'm giving this one a rating of 3 out of 10, because in PvP, there's better options, and in PvE, it just doesn't have what you would want from a PvE fusion rifle. And speaking of Iron Banner Pinnacles slash Rituals, I'm going to go ahead and throw Point of the Stag on this list at a 4 out of 10. So I am going to give it a plus 1 from Wise and Rebuke. And the only reason that I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 is because this thing actually does have perks that you would want for PvP. It's got a Vorpal weapon and it has no distractions. Those are two really good PvP perks to have on a bow. Its downside though is that you would have to use those perks on a bow in PvP and with the precision frames it's it's not it's not the best. You're not going to have that great of a time unless you just really really like bows. So that's why this one's so far down. And by the way, guys, if you want this, this week that I'm uploading this video, which is going to be the week of May 12th, uh, it's going to be the last week that this bow's available. This is the last Iron Banner of the season. If you don't get it right now in Season of the Worthy, it will not be back next year. Let's move on. Next up, we have Redrix's Broadsword. I actually just finished this quest a few days ago and got this for the first time. I had a really hard time finding a rating for this thing in the current meta but I ended up settling on a 5 out of 10. And the reason that I settled there 
is because for pulse rifles, when you get this thing going, when you get Desperado active, this thing is absolutely nuts in PvP. Hands down the best pulse rifle in PvP. But the downsides of it right now are that you have to first get a kill that has to be a precision, then you have to reload to proc a Desperado, and you have to do all that in the current auto rifle meta. So taking all that into consideration is why I landed on a 5 out of 10. Let's move on. Next up, also at a 5 out of 10, I'm putting the Oxygen SR3. This is another one that I struggled with a rating for, because it does have a few things working in its favor. Number one, it's an Amelon Scout Rifle, which just feels very good to shoot. It is a 180 archetype, which is arguably the best archetype for Scout Rifles in PvE, and it's perk Mega Nura, which increases the amount of blast radius that Dragonfly does based on the amount of precision hits that you get beforehand, is a really fun perk. But, right now, Scout Rifles just don't have enough love for them. So, Oxygen is a 5 out of 10 for now, but make no mistake, if Scout Rifles get a buff, this thing could easily be a 7 or 8 out of 10 in no time. Next on our list, also at a 5 out of 10, we have Randy's Throwing Knife. Now, Randy's Throwing Knife, I see a lot of people say, oh yeah, I use it in PvE all the time. And I can see that, I can see you run around patrol and stuff like that, but... I can't imagine anybody bringing a Randy's Throwing Knife into, say, a raid, or into a Grandmaster Nightfall. There's just not a place for it. Even if you had anti-barrier rounds uh, on scout rifles still, I can't see that happening. I would much rather use a 180 archetype instead of a 260 that just tickles the shield. Uh, that sounded kind of gross. But for PvP, this is still a pretty decent option for things like Quick Play. You will not see this a lot in Trials, and there's a reason for that. And all of these things considered is why I give this a 5 out of 10. It could probably be a 6 out of 10 also, if you're just super into Scouts and PvP. But for me, it's a 5 out of 10. Next up, at a 6 out of 10, we have the Breakneck Auto Rifle. Now, I will say this. Breakneck is probably the best PvE auto rifle in the entire game. Um, but much like what I just said about Randy's, you're not going to see a lot of people bringing a Breakneck into raids. You're not going to see them bringing Breaknecks into Grandmaster Nightfalls. It just, they, auto rifles just aren't there. They aren't where they need to be to be in the PvE endgame. And that's why I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. For PvP, if you can get it going, once you get that first kill and you increase the rate of fire, this thing can be an absolute monster. But again, it's situational. It's not going to be something that you're going to take advantage of the perk with. Every single time you get into a gunfight, it's going to be a very rare occurrence that you have this thing procced and spun up and ready to go. So all things considered in the current sandbox, 6 out of 10 for Breakneck. Next on this list at a 6 out of 10, and you might be surprised to hear that, we have Buzzard. The reason that I'm giving this thing such a high rating at 6 out of 10 is because for sidearms in PvE, this is probably the best one in the game. Uh, its perk set is very handy. You have the ability to turn your kinetic weapon into an energy weapon, essentially, or you can run something like Swashbuckler and just do more damage. I have actually used this in 1030 Nightfalls, and it wasn't a detriment. It actually worked pretty well. So all things considered, Sidearms and PvP are pretty good at the moment. Uh, I wouldn't say that this is the best PvP sidearm, but for PvE, this is probably top dog in the sidearm department, and that is why it is a 6 out of 10. Next up, and also at a 6 out of 10, I'm going to put a loaded question. Now, I actually wanted to rate this a lot higher than a 6 out of 10. I want to give it like an 8 out of 10, because I actually love this thing. I use it constantly. I use it in Garden of Salvation. I use it in my 1030 nightfalls pretty much anything where i know that i'm gonna have like an arc shield or something or just a big cluster of ads because its perk is really handy for general ad clear and shield breaks so i personally love loaded question i think it is the best all-around pve fusion rifle i wouldn't use this in crucible same thing with wise and rebuke there's just better options but <clears throat> air <Aaron> tell <clears throat> excuse me i don't know what that was but a uh, loaded question in PvE is a lot of fun, and it is a really good weapon to, when you're getting overrun by adds, to quickly swap to and just take them all out in one shot. Plus, it's got auto-loading holster. It's just a convenient all-around weapon. Next up, and also at a 6 out of 10, I'm going to put the Edgewise Machine Gun. 
The reason I'm putting this at a 6 out of 10 is because it is really good at general ad clear and killing majors, but it does have a counterpart by the name of 21% Delirium that I believe is the better weapon for this archetype. So again, it's good, but there's better. And that's why it's a 6 out of 10. I will use this though if there's like a Grandmaster coming up with a lot of solar shields. I, I would absolutely put this on and use it in my loadout if it called for it. This is a good weapon. 6 out of 10 is, it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of, man. That's pretty good. It's a solid weapon. And speaking of 21% Delirium, it's here on this list next at a 7 out of 10. 21% uh, Delirium, everything that I just said about Edgewise also applies to this, but I do believe that 21% is slightly better because of its perk combinations. I will absolutely use a 21% Delirium in Raids and Grandmaster Nightfalls, all the in-game stuff. Pretty much from here on out, uh, we're talking top tier weapons. You know, things that you could use in PvP and PvE in almost any situation. Next up, we have Luna's Howl at a 7 out of 10. The reason that I'm putting this so high post nerf is because you still see this a lot on console. If you use a controller, Luna's Howl feels really nice. If you're on PC, not quite as good, but still pretty good overall. Pre-nerf Luna's Howl, before they nerfed its Rate of Fire and before they nerfed Magnificent Howl, Luna's Howl would have been like a 13 out of 10. It was insanely good. By far the most fun that I've ever had in PvP with a hand cannon. But even after it being changed to a 150 and Magnificent Howl taking a bit of a hit, it's still a really fun and really solid hand cannon to use in PvP, and that is why it is a 7 out of 10. And also at a 7 out of 10, I'm going to go ahead and put on Not Forgotten. The reason that I'm putting this at the same as Luna's Howl, because Not Forgotten does come with more range, but it comes to it with the uh, decrease in reload speed, stability, and handling. So it's not just a straight all around, this one's better than the other, it's going to come down to playstyle, and playstyle is always subjective. So because of that, Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten in my book need to be on the same tier. Uh, in order for this rating system to make sense. So yeah, Lunas Howl and Not Forgotten, both 7 out of 10. Next up, with an 8 out of 10, we have the Python Shotgun. The only reason that I'm giving this one such a high rating is because it has a unique perk set. It's the only shotgun in the game right now that can come with Overflow and 1-2 Punch, and it also is pretty good in uh, PvP, believe it or not. It's it's right around that same archetype as Mindbenders, doesn't quite have the range that Mindbenders does, but it's also not far behind. So because it can pull double duty, be a fun PvE shotgun as well as a good PvP shotgun, it deserves a higher rating, and that is why it is setting at an 8 out of 10. Next up, also at an 8 out of 10, we have Exit Strategy. Exit Strategy is like if you went to Target with your mom and you were like, Mom, can I have Recluse? And she's like, no, we have Recluse at home and you got home and she handed you Exit Strategy. It is like the store brand Recluse. But the reason that it is as high up on this list as it is, being an 8 out of 10, is because if Recluse was not in the game, if Recluse did not exist, Exit Strategy could have a case for the best all-around submachine gun in the game. It's pretty solid. But, you know, its downside is that Recluse is in the game. So, 8 out of 10 possibly a 9 out of 10 if Recluse didn't exist. Next up, and also at an 8 out of 10, we have Hush. Now look, Hush is the best bow in the game. It, it really is. It's the best all-around bow in the game. Once you get this thing going, it shoots about as fast as a hand cannon. It's, it's the best bow in the game. But its downside is that it's a bow in the game. So, I mean, it's subjective. If you're super into bows, Hush is you know, the top of that mountain. But if you're not into bows, if you're into hand cannons, if you're into scout rifles, if you're into autos, you're not going to leave those for Hush because Hush is a bow. But it deserves credit where credit is due. It is the best of its weapon type, and that's why I have to give it at least an 8 out of 10. But, you know, if bows were in a better place and, you know, other things weren't as good, Hush could easily be a 10 out of 10, but if the sandbox was even, Hush could also even be like a 5 out of 10. I don't know, this one was a really hard for me to rank. I just feel like it deserves credit for being the best of its thing, but its thing sucks, currently. So, 8 out of 10, Hush. 8 out of 10. Next up, with a 9 out of 10, we have the Wendigo GL3. 
This one was another one that I struggled with rating. I ultimately decided on a nine because when you do have a six stack of explosive light, this is probably one of the best, if not the best, burst DPS weapons in the game. You can get so much damage off with this thing in such a small amount of time when you have explosive light times six. When you don't have explosive light times six, this, like, don't even use it. Don't even swap to it. You only want to use this uh, on bosses if you are going to be having a ton of orbs at your disposal. If you do not have those orbs to pick up, this thing is so far below average, it's not even funny, man. But uh, yeah, when it does work, when you are in the correct situation, this thing is god tier, hands down. Next up, with a 9 out of 10, we have Revoker. Now, this thing could easily be a 10 out of 10. I ended up settling on a 9 out of 10 simply because sniper rifles and PvP do have a bit of a skill gap. Not everybody's going to be able to pick this thing up and just be god tier with it without bots but revoker by itself even if you take away its reversal perk where it gives you the ammo back even if you take that away this is still a very strong sniper because it is a 72 rpm high impact and it has a very low zoom scope that is such a big deal i can't even stress that enough this thing without its special perk is probably still a 7 or 8 out of 10 but with its perk it's a 9 out of 10 possibly even a 10 out of 10. I just went with a nine, like I said, because there is a skill gap. Next up, we have the mountaintop. Now, I struggled so bad with this one, so I'm gonna give it a rating of a 9.5 out of 10. I couldn't decide if it deserved a nine or a 10. Its case for the nine would be that since Luna Factions and Rally Barricade got nerfed, you can't just fire this thing endlessly. That was when it was like a 15 out of 10. It was insane for DPS. But with the nerf, it's not really a boss weapon anymore. It's more of a major weapon or a not so squishy yellow bar type of weapon. It's still very strong though. And it is still the best of the grenade launchers that does not fit in your power slot. So there's a case to be made for a nine. There's a case to be made for a 10. I'm gonna call it a 9.5 out of 10. It's just a really good weapon. And the final weapon and the easiest 10 out of 10 on this list out of all the pinnacles, rituals, pursuit weapons, whatever you want to call them, has got to be the Recluse. This is such a no-brainer. It is a 10 out of 10. Even after it was nerfed, this thing is still just so easy to use. Not only is it a really good weapon with a really good perk set, but it is just, it's idiot proof because it does so much damage when you're shooting enemies in the body and it has such a high rate of fire. It's a perfect storm of just point and click. That is all you need to do with Recluse. You don't need to aim. You don't need to land precisions. You just point at the enemy, you click the button on your mouse or you pull the trigger on your controller, that enemy disappears. Recluse is an easy 10 out of 10. And that is going to do it for this video, guys. Sorry this one ran a little bit long. I honestly did not realize there were so many damn pinnacle slash ritual weapons in this game until I started uh, getting screenshots of all of them together and putting them in a folder. I was like, holy crap, there's like 20-something. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Feel free to head down to the comment section below and let me know all the ones that I got wrong. I can't wait to read those. And uh, you have yourself a good day. If you enjoyed this video, click like. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, I fucking love you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and take care.